Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at how we can art direct randomized color in cloners using Unreal Engine 5.5 motion design tools. So I've got a basic setup here where there is a single cloner that is cloning a sphere and that sphere is using an automotive material that's uh, got a few little adjustments so that we can randomize the color for each clone in the field that we see here. Now what's also special about this is that we can art direct this color variation. So right now I have a color curve here that allows for a wide variety of colors to be selected for the various cloners. But if I open up the material instance being used, I can use different color curves to define predefined color schemes for these clones. And so even though all of these clones are using the same randomization value for assigning a color, we can draw that color from a variety of different color curves that we can customize and use for art direction. So let's get into how we set this up. What I'm gonna do to uh, get back to the beginning is just start with this original car paint and apply that. So we just have a gray car paint applied to all the spheres right now. And a control S, save everything, and I will go ahead and uh, delete everything else that's here. So I'll get rid of my custom car paints and also my custom color curves so we can build this all up from scratch. So deleting everything. And all we're left with is this original car paint. So the first thing we want to do is create a variety of color curves to work with. So I can right click in our content browser and go to miscellaneous and choose curve. And so I can do a curve linear color and select that. And I'll call this a color palette 01 and double click and right now it's just a black to gray curve but i can select this first button double click and let's make that blue and say okay and the second spot that can be red all right and then we get this general blend in between them so that's one down and uh, i can do uh, i think uh, control s to save that and then let's duplicate that control d double click and maybe we revert well let's just um, change our colors. We'll make this uh, green right? and say OK to that. And now we're going green, yellow to red. And maybe instead of red, we just pull that a little bit closer to orange. OK, so there's a second color group and Control Shift S. And so we've got two right there. And I'll just do the uh, Roy G. Biv. And so I'll just uh, select this and Control D to duplicate that. Color palette three, double click. And we'll start with red. And we'll just place in a yellow. And I'm just double clicking here all the time to either place another color chip and double clicking to get in there. Let's say blue. OK. And we want to end on red again. So I'm just going to color sample the original red. And there we go, we've got our Roy G. Biv. And if I wanted to, I could also adjust the way these uh, colors are blending. Like right now, these are very, very linear. You can see how there's the curves are angled. So I could select all of these, for example, uh, Control A, and uh, just have them automatically blending nicely. Except we don't want to go above one. So let me make sure I'm only moving in Y only here. So let me select these two. And I think if I pull down up, oh, I moved, somehow I managed to move in X as well. So maybe there is, ah, here it is. I just want to deactivate this um, magnet here. So now I think if I can move these, there we go. So now uh, I have this all below here we go, all below the uh, one value. Let's do that with this as well. Here we are, that's all below one. And same thing down here, we don't want anything dropping below zero. So try and keep these as smooth as possible. Anyway, um, you get the idea. We can kind of art direct this. And, and now we have a nice smooth, smooth curve. OK, so now what we need is an atlas, a collection of these. So I'm just going to right click and type in atlas. And Curve Atlas is what we're selecting here. And I'll just call this Color Curves. 
and double click on that and it's uh, 256 wide and it's square so it's 256 high I really only need three uh, I'm gonna uncheck this and just set it to eight so I've got room for more I can zoom in by using my mouse wheel and then I can add a gradient curves to this I've got three gradient curves defined so one two three and I will drag these in one at a time and now I've got three uh, curves set up now of course you can see them here and I have plenty of room I can add more if I like uh, that's enough for now and control shift s so finally I want to make the modifications to our material so that we can use them in the cloner so I'll double click on my material and in this case I'm going to focus on our base color here so what I'll do is first of all bring in our cloner information node so right click type in cloner cloner effect parameter and here we've get a variety of values that are going to be distinct for each and every clone so uh, there could be a count as how many effectors are affecting that clone uh, the effector weight the count of uh, total clones the age of this clone you know if it's uh, in a simulation velocity etc what I'm going to be using in this case is the random value this is going to be a random 0 to 1 value assigned to each and every clone when they're created and so I want to map that value to one of these curves so I'll just right click and I'll type in curve and here is curve atlas row parameter and I'll just call this uh, curve, color curve. Let's call it base curve. There we go. And in its parameters with this node selected, I want to change a few things. I want to call this group uh, cloner values. Let's do that for the group. And I also want to assign the atlas. So here's my color curve atlas. And I want the curve default assigned and I'll just take this color palette here this first one that I know is at the top of this all right and so there are my defaults and now the curve time input is going to be that random value so this value will be 0 to 1 and what that'll do is select one of the colors from 0 on the left to 1 on the right from this uh, color curve and finally we want to work that into our colors for our materials so what I can do here is uh, put in a switch node so the switch node basically is a decision by the user do I want to use this or not in this particular material instance so I'm going to right click and type in switch and we're going to do a static switch parameter and we're going to say use uh, curve use base curve and I will also uh, give that, put that into the group of cloner values. So that's in cloner values. And if it's false, I'm just going to use the original base color. But if it's true, I want to use the color coming out of our randomized base color. And then uh, with this switch, I want to feed the output to the original outputs uh, of the base color. So wherever that base color is going, I'm going to replace it. And there's only two places, one and two. There we go. So now we'll have a switch to turn it on and off. And we'll have a parameter to select which curve we're going to use. So there we go. We will save that and close that material and then I can select it and can let's see right click let's create a material instance and we'll just sit, say enter accept the default name and double click and I'm going to go ahead and assign this instance to our clone so again the sphere clone is selected I will drag this instance onto it and here is our cloner value so we do want to use the base curve let's activate that and now there is our color curve and there it is applied to our clones wonderful and of course I can uh, now drag any of these uh, color palettes into here let's activate the base curve parameter and drag that in and so now we've got our greens and yellows and here's our RGBiv and that allows us to art direct the randomization of color for cloners I hope this helps and until next time have fun